if our brothers could stop looking at the outside as the gateway to success i don't think there's anything better than this land that we're in there's literally the land of milk and honey this is isaac kasonde a 22 year old entrepreneur who owns one of Botswana's largest farms <laughs> So we used 2,500 mm -hmm. to make 18,000. Ooh, this one just getting burnt. In today's video, it takes us on a journey of how he plans to build one of the largest farming companies in Africa. Oh, so you didn't go to uni? I didn't go to uni, no. I come here every day. Every single day? Every single day. What's up guys, how are you doing today? It's Tayo I know here again and I'm currently in Gabron, Botswana and beside me is Isaac who is the founder of Wealth Park which is an agricultural and farming company. So what's up man, how are you doing? I'm wonderful, nice how are you doing? Nice to have you here. <laughs> how old are you by the way, if I may ask? I'm 22 at the moment. You're 22? You're 22? Yes. <laughs> are you serious? I finished school in 2018. The university was definitely not uh, Plan. Oh, oh, so you didn't go to uni? I didn't go to uni, no. Oh, wow. So, moment that finished, sat down with my parents, I'm like, let me just enter the family businesses. Okay. And they were like, okay, we'll give you a chance. Mm. And they said, okay, find something to do. And then, luckily, Botswana just got the vegetable ban. Botswana and Namibia banned the import of several types of South African fruits and vegetables. Oh, wow. So, the moment it ended, I decided to go into farming. And then I just decided that yeah this is gonna be my home now what's the size of this land that we're currently on currently we're on 10 hectares right now 10 hectares yes 10 hectares not acres hectares hectares yes <laughs> <laughs> How did you get started getting the land? Well, for me, very fortunate. I have very loving parents. They really saw the vision. They told me, put it on paper. I put it on paper, gave them a proposal, and they were happy with it. Can you just give us the process of starting a farm? I think first and foremost, you need to decide what you like. Okay. There's crops, there's animals. Mm. So I think first thing first, you should decide what you're willing to fight for. So whether it will be in the vegetables or in the animals, you have to go in and understand the market so basically you have to do your research uh, so what I did was I went to supermarket okay. asked them what they're missing so I also created relationships with the people in the supermarket okay so even prior to me starting the farm I used to call them all the time just to inquire they're really friendly people by the way hmm. so you just go you inquire and they will literally tell you everything they need to know because at the end of the day they also in need of vegetables can you explain what this is and what happens here? This is a net shade. It's on half a hectare. It's 100 meters by 50 meters. Is this lettuce or what's this? Uh, this right here is spinach. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. This is nice. So this is just the beginning stages of the spinach. Okay. Here they are about four to six weeks old. And then this is fully mature. This is what I'm currently supplying in the shops at the moment. God, was it difficult to set up? No, definitely you need to work with the right people. But I worked with some very lovely people. They managed to set up everything for me within the time frame that they set out. And it was all very professional. Everything was local. What are the functions of this net? In Botswana, we have very hot climate. Basically what this net does, it keeps the plants cool so that they don't get burnt. Why did you decide to go into this business? First and foremost, I come from a very huge farming background. Oh, okay. My mother's Kenyan, my dad is Zambian. Back in Kenya, we are very big farmers. Hmm. That is basically what my mom, what took her to school, oh, wow. what afforded her all the things. Same thing with my dad also okay. in Zambia. My Zambian side, they did more cattle and stuff. Then back home in Kenya, we did a lot of maize and grain crops, yeah. How lucrative is farming? Let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about money now. Yeah. Farming can be very lucrative if your quality meets the standards. For you, of course, to, you know, get the big bucks and, you know, be someone recognized, you need to have great quality and you need to be on top of your game in terms of also your consistency. So when it comes to being lucrative, just depends on you. Okay. Yeah. 
depending on how our week is if we're slaughtering chicken if we're harvesting just depends on our week how our orders are like mm. and then that's how we usually work so the week before i'll do the orders and yeah. make all the orders and then we'll sit down with my guys and we'll tell them okay we need to do one two three by this time and so far so good is this going to be replicated across the rest of the land definitely definitely okay. i have big plans for expansion okay. but that will also come with time and and also my skill level. Oh, okay. I'm still learning a lot. You're still learning a lot. A lot because uh, prior to all this, it was just me and Google. Now it's me and ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a computer program that will write whatever you want quickly and convincingly. Oh, use ChatGPT AI. Yeah. Oh, cool. This is where I do all my storage. When I do my packaging, this is where I do all my packaging. This one's now the... Uh... Yeah, no, these are for you guys when you're... <laughs> oh, this one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so Thank this you. is how I sell my product. So, like, this is, like, how much? Depending on where you are, it's between 5 to 10 pula. So, like, averagely, how much do they sell this in the supermarket? Between 5 and 6 pula. I sell it to them for about 3 to 4 pula. 3 to 4 pula, yeah. oh, okay. So Depending they're... on the demand. So, of course, with the more quantity, the price goes down. Goes down, yeah, yeah so, true. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the business itself. Mm -hmm. If you were to do a session of planting and a session of harvest, what's the markup? Can you just give us some numbers? Basically, when we have a season of planting, what we're looking at is our seed, yeah. our fertilizer, and our labor involved. Usually that varies depending on the crop. Okay. Some crops take longer, some crops take shorter. So I can just give an example with yeah. chilies. Huh? Okay. Chilies for the whole season, they do two, two per crop. And I planted about 8,000 crops. And how much do they sell a kilogram? A kilogram right now, depending also on the chili, ranges from 15 to 40 people. So if you invested, let's say, like $100 on seeds and all of that, I'm just trying to get an idea of like the markup. Like I said, what do you call this? The 8,000, if I can just multiply the 8,000 by, let's say the two. Okay. So that's worst case scenario. Oh, that's 16,000. Yeah, that's 16,000. And how much was used to buy those 8,000 seeds? I used about 2,500. So you used 2,500? to make almost around 16 to 18,000. Yeah, 16 to 18,000. Wow. So this is where I keep all my cows, this is where I keep all my pigs and my chickens. But where are the cows now? Right now they're grazing. Okay, you let them out? Oh, yeah, I let them out, oh, they're wow. grazing, yeah. What's like the vision for you? I just want to perfect my craft so that when I do decide to get into the market seriously, yeah. I have something to stand on in terms of the quality of my work. When you say get into the market seriously, you mean like expand? Yeah, expand properly. Oh. Do you see something like in the next five years that like it's going to be big? I see myself going into grains in the future. That's called dry arable farming. Hmm. So it's like where you have huge piece of land and you just plant one crop and then you would need the huge tractors with the combine harvesters. Then you'd store your produce in silos. Hmm. So that's where I want to see myself growing. Is that where the real money is made? Yeah. That's where the real money is made. <laughs> I like the fact that you are patient. No, I really am. If I'm being very honest with you, farming is not to just get in and make quick cash. Hmm. You have to have like a 15 to maybe 25 year plan. Because when you look at farming, you're looking at providing food for a nation. And that's a big task. It's just something you really have to, you know, sit down and plan out. Are there ever been a situation where you have crops and there's no demand? Yeah, all the time. There's something we have called crop rotation. And when you're doing the vegetables, especially fresh vegetables, very yeah. perishable vegetables, you're always encouraged to crop rotate because what's in demand now will not be in demand in the next three months. Oh. And also seasons keep on changing, changing also. So once the season changes, you need to change the crop also. What are some of the problems you faced? Definitely being in a hot country, number one, water water has been a big big problem so sometimes you don't have the water in your no it's not that i don't have it i don't have enough i mean that in the sense of if i needed to expand i need to drill another bowl oh really yeah. and that's more money more that's investment. more money more investment yeah what's up piggy piggy oh see this big one wow how old are this one she is about two years old two years she is about a year old 
How much do you think this thing is worth? I'd say between maybe 4.5, 5,000. But take into account, in terms of breeds, mine aren't pedigree. There are some purebred breeds that you can get, definitely. Mm. But this is just the normal big white. Oh. Yeah. If you have more pigs. At the moment, I have about 31. Ooh, this one just gave birth. Yeah. <laughs> Come see. They look so cute. Oh, sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Did you start everything at once or you started with farming then you moved into animals? What I did basically was with my pigs I only started with four, three males and a female. From there I have 31. Also all my cows and my chickens I started at one point I had 20. Then I bought an incubator, started doing my own eggs. Are there some of the ways government helps you? Yeah, no, they stuff? definitely help. They set up a thing where you can hire tractors. All you need to do is pay for the fuel oh. and they'll come and they'll plow for you. Oh, wow. And then if I was a Motswana, yeah. they would actually do it all for free. They would give me the seed and the tractor to come plow my land. What would you say to like a lot of young people and they want to get into farming? Do your research first hmm. and foremost. After you do your research, find out what you're willing to slave for. Hmm. Because farming is a lot of hard work, hmm. a lot of sleepless nights. That's it, yeah. So, so how many times do you come to the farm? Is this something you just set up and you just left? No, no, you're I, always here? I come here every day. Every single day? Every single day. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, I know it is, definitely. <laughs> so do you, how do you chill? How do you relax? As a young right, guy now, right. you want to flex, you want to chill, you want to, you know, enjoy so yourself. I'm being very honest with you, I'm very boring. When I'm not here, I'm doing my other business businesses and yeah that's what I'll be doing. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Do you feel like Botswana is a place where foreigners can come and yeah. start a business? Yeah it's definitely. The more the merrier. How expensive is it to acquire land here? Well, it definitely depends on the area. In dollars, it would be between 80 and 120 thousand dollars. 10 to 25 hectares mm -hmm. for like 80 to 100 thousand dollars. Yeah. And this is like out of town. And then there are a few hot areas when it comes to farming in terms of the kind of soil that's available and the animals. Because some animals do very well in the field. You don't need to buy any feed. If you have a big farm, you can just graze and sell. That's it. If you were given a chance to, you know, from your point of view, change something mm -hmm. about Africa, what would it be? I would like maybe if our brothers could stop looking at the outside as the gateway to success. I don't think there's anything better than this land that we're in. You know, it's literally the land of milk and honey. I feel like there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. If more people could come back and just work in that country with your people, it would be lovely. Lots of you are watching this are inspired by your story. What's your advice to them generally? Just grind it out and trust yourself if I'm being very honest with you and think long term always so that you can be able to get something fruitful. Anything short term, trust me, it's not going to work. Thank you Thank very, you very much. much. <laughs> really appreciate yeah, you. No problem. So guys, that's all I have to share with you. Thank you very much for sharing your story. I'm going to put like contact details to your company in no the problem. description below. No if you're ever coming down to Botswana, or if you live in Botswana and you want to buy anything that he's, you've seen all the products that he yeah. has, just contact him and tell him Tyra sent you. 